Um, oh, what a start to the stream. Uh, but yeah, we'll kind of cut that part out. <laughs> Technical difficulties can be edited in post, as they will say. Um, let me just put the mic a little bit closer there. Uh, also, thank you, Johnny G underscore triple seven for following us while we're offline. But let's get it underway. So this is the team. Uh, just the 44 points, another red arrow. Very frustrating, uh, unfortunately. Um, and it's just not been going well. Uh, if we look at our game week history... Um, we've had three reds on the spin, which isn't great. Uh, we were around 1.1 million. We kind of fluctuated in around there and we've gone back to where we were back in around game week 11, which is not ideal. So we're going to make some drastic changes because that's the only way, uh, that we can, uh, get out of the soul, to be honest. Um, I don't, I'd rather go all the way down to 8 million, uh, while trying to get to inside the top 100k, uh, you know, figuratively, if that's the goal, um, while doing it the way that I want to do it, basically. So, uh, obviously, in FPO, you play your own game. So, we're going to definitely be doing that. Um, we're not necessarily going to be influenced. I mean, I currently have Holland captain and whatnot, but because uh, that just makes the most sense to kind of cover the triple captainers. Um, and we kind of get some things elsewhere, which we should be fine to do. Like, if you don't captain Holland and he goes crazy with the the eo yeah you shouldn't play around eo like that but um you know it is what it is on that front it's just kind of a losing battle basically um uh on that one um so yeah i would say just uh, i would say if you're not trip captaining holland make sure to captain holland um Unless you're going for some real differential and you're way down and you need to catch up somehow. Um, then you can go for somebody different. But I'm going to get rid of a lot of prom problematic players hopefully tonight. Um, so yeah, we're going to move on from that. Also for the scores, um, I didn't get the Chelsea score right. That was the only one that we had left to do. Um, I predicted 2-1 in favor of Chelsea. They end up losing 2-1. Uh, Joe Felix getting sent off. Welcome to the Premier League, Joe Felix. Um and Havertz didn't get a return. So uh, we were two out of five on the differential. So um, unlucky there. But yeah, this is the team. This is the team. Also, I saw Mono, who's in the chat, a regular in the chat as well. Uh, he posted his team as well. He's got a very good team. He's got uh, Kepa, Trippier, Shaw, Robertson, Martinelli, uh, Rashford with the vice captaincy, Salah, Almiron, Mitrovic, Holland captain, and Darwin Nunez with Castagna, Andreas, and Ben White on the bench. With Ward as his backup goalkeeper. And he's basically looking to do a minus four. He's either going to do Salah uh, and Robertson to KDB and Botman. Mitrovic uh, and Salah to Martial and KDB. That one I will not do because Martial is not pictured in training. So scratch B off the list. Uh, Mitro to Kane and Salah to Odegaard. I like that move. Uh, Robo to Lewis and Mitro to Kane. I think that one is probably decent as well. So if I had to, if, you know, if I was choosing for you, um, I would probably say the Salah to KDB one probably makes the most sense, but you might want Salah right back if they get a double game week, because that is still a possibility. Um, I do like Kane this week. I think Odegaard's a good longer term pick as well. Um, but uh, I do like the, the, the Lewis one because worst case scenario, when it comes down to it, you're going to, you could just bench Lewis um and then worry about him later basically um so i think that uh b is probably off the table um uh, and then it's one of uh probably a uh c or d if i had to order them i would probably say i like the uh the ones that involve kane the most and i would probably say probably d is probably the best out of all of them uh because you get lewis in as well um, although you don't have another Mad City attack bar from Holland, so swings and roundabouts on that one. But uh, actually, I'd probably say C. Probably Kane and Odegaard is probably future proofs you for a little bit longer, I would say. Whereas the Lewis one, he could just be like out of favor immediately. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I would say on that from. Uh, let me move this out of the way. Okay. Uh, Darwin's yellow flag. You have 58 points this week, which is good. Last one is Mitro. Uh, Mitro to Kane and Salah to Bruno. 
I see Mimi Bruno Fernandez. I like that one too. That one's not bad as well. I do like that one a lot. Um, but yeah, anything that does like Martial, I might get rid of because it seems like he might not be available either. Um, so what I might do is set myself up for whatever transfers I'm going to make tonight, and then if Martial's out, do an additional minus four because I'm I, I'm I'm willing to rip up the team and take a heavy heavy hit, even though we have one free transfer. I, to me, it doesn't really matter. What's my thoughts on KDB? Probably the second best uh, city asset behind Holland. Um, I think if you go with him, uh, just know that in games where it's going to be against a tougher opposition, uh, he can tend to play a bit more on the defensive side. Tend to. Uh, especially if the game's tight. Uh, and when Pep tries to like kind of slow the game down and try to win the game narrowly, he tends to drop off and, and play a bit deeper and kind of control from there. Um, but, um, when KDB has been playing his best, he's been playing as like a shadow striker to Holland. But if that's the case, then they lose control in the midfield because Rodri, uh, and Gundogan don't really have the legs to do it. If Bernardo's in there, then maybe they do. Um, but, uh, Pep will come up with something, but basically they need to worry about the counter. Um, uh, but if they play Walker right back, that means Lewis is probably not going to play. So, and I expect them to play Kyle Walker, uh, almost certainly, uh, to, to prevent Rashford from getting in mind. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how I see it. Um, I think it, like KDB, what's his ownership right now? 37.4%. Um... I mean, is that really massive? I mean, last four games, he probably should have had at least a couple returns because of just the chances. Like, De Bruyne is always going to be good. Um, but is he worth the premium? Probably not. Um, I still like Phil Foden, even though he did play um, in the weekend loss versus Southampton. He's probably one of the very few players that actually came out of the game with some kind of respect level. Uh, and I think he can play on the left over Grealish to give that width. Um, the other one who can also keep that with is Mares, but, uh, Pep likes control and that Grealish gives him that control because Grealish wins fouls, which keeps the ball longer. So we'll have to wait and see. I still think Foden's going to get into the team because when Foden and Holland are playing together, they're like, if you try to stop Holland, if you are like, try to double team or triple team him, then Foden's open and Foden's brilliant. If you try to stop Foden, then Holland's open. Like you can't, you just can't stop them when they're both on the pitch. Whereas like Grealish, you can kind of just control, just don't let him cut inside. Like, cause he's not the greatest crosser with his, with his weaker foot. Uh, although he, I think he did create a, he, he got the goal for, for Mara's, um, uh, a week or so ago. Um, with his left foot, I believe. So, am I gonna play Kepa or Ward this week? I'll play Kepa. I'll probably play Kepa. Just because Palace aren't great at the moment, uh, whereas Nottingham Forest are good, and especially they've been been particularly good at home. So I'd play Kepa. Uh, as for the rest of the Chelsea players, uh, well, actually, I might be be getting rid of Kepa. So, let's go through some a little bit of a little bit of ex experiments here. So we got three point one million in the bank. So, Darwin, I think, is out for a few weeks. So, he's probably gone. Um, and I think Kane is the one I want. Uh, Martial, I'll wait and see on him. So, we'll leave him in the team for now. Sterling's got to go because he's injured. Kukurea is going to go because I can't be bothered with Chelsea anymore. Um, Robertson's going to go because I just think Liverpool just aren't keeping a clean sheet anytime soon, especially not against Brighton. Uh, they probably won't keep a clean sheet versus Chelsea, uh, because they just concede versus everyone. And then they have Wolves and Everton and we can assess then if, or if they have a double with Chelsea, then sure, whatever. Um, and we'll figure that out later. Is Robertson a necessity to go? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, Kepa could also potentially go as well. Um... And the rest of the team can probably stay, to be honest. Uh, so, like, if Martial doesn't show up for two games, um, then I'm perfectly fine with Ben White just kind of coming in for the one game. It's not the end of the world here. So, my thinking was going a bit rogue. 
Um, everyone's going De Bruyne. Uh, I could go Mares as an example. I think Mares is potentially a good shout. I think the likelihood is either one of Mares or Foden will start. I don't see them both being benched. Because if they're both benched, then you're playing like Alvarez and Grealish, which just doesn't sound good. Or you're playing Grealish and Bernardo, which doesn't sound good either. Um, and I think Mares is in good form. Um, the other alternative uh, in midfield is I could go Bruno Fernandes. That's another option. I don't think Bruno Fernandes has gotten, you know, the crazy, crazy returns of, you know, a couple seasons ago. Uh, but is potentially going to get those games where he does get that, you know, that, that, uh, you know, get the penalty goal, which again, we're assuming that he still has penalties because Rashford took one in the cup uh, and scored it, uh, very well taken penalty as well. Um, but Bruno is also guaranteed minutes like, like Mano says in the chat. So he's another one, um, a potential third option. Uh, would be obviously to go for Grealish himself, but I think Grealish is someone who could just easily just not play well and then just get like a streak where it's like just either he's injured or whatever, because Grealish can get injured quite frequently. So I don't think he's necessarily the best. Uh, we can just go for an Arsenal midfielder. Uh, you can go for Odegaard. Uh, you can go Saka. Uh, but is that the gaming to do it? I don't think so. We can also just get De Bruyne. We can just have De Bruyne, Foden, and Holland, and go treble up there. That is an option that we can do. Um, so let's leave him in there for now. That does hinder the rest of the team. Uh, and if we want to triple United, we'll definitely go Shaw because it looks like Delo is potentially injured. But again, I will guarantee. I will hundred percent wait for tomorrow for this. If Kane goes up in price or whoever goes up in price, then sure, whatever, we'll figure it out. Um. City mid a dream, but so risky. Is Saka fully fit? Again, yeah, Saka's another one. I, I'm not sure. He did go off injured. Uh, he isn't flagged currently, but could be injured. So I don't know. We don't know for certain. Um, another defender that I like is uh, Sven Botman. I think Sven Botman is someone who is providing a lot of value at 4.4 million. Uh, he started basically every game and gotten, you know, the 90 minutes from game week nine onwards. Um, so he's an option. You can also go for Fabian Scherer, who's slightly more expensive, but you might as well just go Botman because it just makes more sense. Um, any thoughts on the hey or marches? I was actually going to come to them. So if you wanted to go for the double up, I think Lissandra Martinez is currently, he's currently a fitness concern. Because he's only played two Premier League minutes since he's come back. Um, and looks to be a bit kind of, uh, a bit leggy, as it were. Um, so again, would be a fitness concern. Uh, Varane, another one, potentially could be, you know, one of these players, you know, can go... You could play him in two games and then he doesn't play for three or, or two games. And then, you know, it could be a craziness there. Uh, Wambasak, another one, 4.3 million. Again, ideal, but will he start? We could easily play Malasia uh, at right back over Wambasaka. It's very possible. And then Malasia, as we mentioned, again, he could not play as well. So, again, that one's a bit tougher. I think if you're going to go double United defense... I think you go uh, you go De Gea because you know De Gea is going to start. Guaranteed, sure shot thing, 100%. Uh, Luke Shaw, I think he's going to play left side at center back because he's the closest thing to Martinez. Um, and I think that um, he's just ridiculously good at the moment. Anthony's another decent shout, but the only problem with Anthony is that I think uh, he, he's, he's very sometimey. Um... You know, in the Premier League, he's only gotten three goals in his first three games. Uh, um, and there was still a gap in between them. But in the, you know, outside of the Premier League, he's done okay. Again, probably wouldn't go there. I'd probably go for, if you're going to go for three United players, I would say the priority is probably Rashford, then Shaw, then one of probably De Gea slash Bruno. 
is ones I would go for right now. If I knew Delo was fit and he had no problem and it was just precautionary or whatever, um, then I would go Delo and Shaw and Rashford, but um, unfortunately that's not the case. Um, another goalkeeper that you could just easily go is you could just go Nick Pope. I mean, Nick Pope is another goalkeeper that's just keeping clean sheet after clean sheet. They have brilliant fixtures. The only issue is that come game week, uh, they said on uh, Planet FPL, either 24 or 25, um, if both Man United and Newcastle get to the Carabao Cup final, which is very likely based on their opponents, um, there will be a blank for both of them. And if you have Nick Pope, Trippier, Botman, Almiron, Wilson, uh, Rashford, Martial, Shaw, De Gea, any combination of those guys, they're both going to blank. So that's kind of a problem if you have six of them, um, which would be unfortunate. So maybe potentially steer clear there, which is why I'm also considering Ederson as well. Again, not the flashiest goalkeeper, but again, we'll keep clean sheets. Um, plays for arguably the best team in the league. So... Ederson is an option as well. Again, if you have De Bruyne or Foden and Holland already in your team, you can't do that, which is why mine would be a consideration potentially um, to go in, you know, go Ederson as the as the safe pick, Holland as safe pick, and still have Foden as kind of the differential, or even just get rid of Foden altogether um, and just go De Bruyne, Ederson, Holland, the three most solid players um, in the team. Uh, we would already have triple United, which could potentially be changed up. Um, actually, let me just reset this real quick. So Kepa would come out for Ederson. Uh, Sterling would come out for De Bruyne. Darwin would come out for Kane. Kukure would come out for Shaw. Uh, Foden would have to come out for somebody. Um, and that somebody could be like Matoma, as an example, at 4.9 million. Um, potentially could have, because um, Brighton have a couple fixtures to rearrange, could potentially have a double somewhat soon and has been playing very well. Um, and he could give Liverpool a huge problem. I, I like him versus Liverpool, honestly. So he is potentially an option there as well. Bruno's ahead of KDB for this week. Maybe a good time to assess how KDB plays um, to get back in for next double game week. If poor Salah could come back in, Bravo to Botman would allow to help funds. It would. Yep, that's another one as well. Um, the alternative, we can look at Man City defenders as well. So John Stones is currently flagged. He would be my preference if you had to pick a Man City defender. But I think the likelihood is Kanji uh, at 5 million is what you're kind of looking for. Uh, for just kind of your vanilla pick who's going to play most games. Uh, and has been pretty steady. Uh, Nathan Ake at 5 million as well would be another option. Again, it's very sometimey. Uh, in terms of when he does play, I would say a Kanji, if you're going to pick one right now and you didn't have any team news or anything like that, um, then uh, that's who I would say is the one to go for currently. If Stones was fit and available, I think you pick Stones. Uh, Matoma is a great shout. Is Trossard out long term? No, he's just not being picked. I don't think he's injured. I think he's just not being picked. Currently. Um... Because uh, apparently he doesn't work hard enough. So that's not a good sign when your manager telling you don't work hard enough. Yeah, Ferguson also a good striker if you keep starting. Definitely a very good option. He was, but now he's uh, he's been dropped. Like if you look at Trossard... Um, I think he had a bit of a knock, but I don't think that's the case. I think that may be a little bit of a cover-up because the manager said, like, yeah, you don't work hard enough or something like that. Or it basically alluded to that fact, which, um, you know, isn't what you want to hear, right?
Um... Yeah, there's rumors going around uh, saying that Martial uh, potentially has a, a groin injury, which obviously is a, a problem. If that is the case, though, and Martial isn't available, uh, there's a chance that Valveg Horse gets thrown straight in, basically. So that's another uh, another thing to kind of uh, consider. As he was scheduled to fly in today and do his medical. Not to go back to Veg Horse, I don't know. Martial is a breadstick disaster. Glad we got Veg Horse. Yeah, oh yeah, it's uh, that's the reason why. Because we knew that Martial wasn't going to stay fit. And Veghorst is very good defensively in terms of his press and whatnot. So, um, uh, I'm just trying to see if there's anything else here. Potentially, if there's anything of, uh, of note... Yeah, apparently, I mean, Trossard looks like he might even be on his way. Uh, might even be on his way uh, out the door to Spurs as cover for uh, for Son. So that could be a uh, could be interesting. You're not going minus sixteen. I might. <laughs> Team needs major surgery, I think. Let's bring up the FPL planner. So this is the team currently as it stands. Let me put in the correct players who would normally play. So that's how the team would, would probably line up. Um, Harlem would be the captain, Rash vice captain. So... If I were to do something crazy like, let's go get Ederson, bring him in. Let's get rid of Sterling. Bring in De Bruyne. Let's get rid of Foden. Bring in Matoma as an example. Let's get rid of Martial. We're going to bring in Kane. Um, actually, how do I undo that? Undo. Get rid of Darwin. Bring in Kane. Get rid of Kukurea. Bring in Shaw. And that would be currently for exact funds for minus 16. If I knew that Martial was out, um, I could do a straight swap to Enketia, who's an Arsenal player that I potentially want. That would be my triple up. I would have Enketia, Martinelli, and Ben White, which I think is perfectly fine. Um... I think price point wise, we're still, you know, we're still okay um, in the games where Arsenal have doubles or, or whatever. We can still play Ben White. It's perfectly fine. Kane could also go up in price. Yeah. So I could be, I could be 0.1 short come tomorrow, which would be a bit of a pain, but it's, it's a possibility. So I might just have to, I, I, I need the information to make the, to make the decision. Let me double check, see how close he is. Yeah, it looks like Kane, Botman, and Ketia all could potentially go up. Um, so, maybe the decision has to be made tonight. And Foden could go down, which would be annoying as well. So again, some decisions might need to be made. Uh, in like just under an hour. So 50, 51 minutes from now. They go half past 
on the next hour. So what's that? Like 2.30 your time? Or I don't know what, what time zone you're in my or how many hours you're ahead. But so it's 1.30 or just going 1.30? Yeah, so 2.30 your time is when they'll change. 2.30 is when they'll change your time, which is, uh, yeah, it'll be 1.30 UK time, uh, 8.30 EST, so, oh, it's 12.40 now, okay, yeah, 1.30, 1.30 your time. But yeah, if we go into game week 21, we would have a lot of Man United players playing against uh, Arsenal players. But, you know, it is what it is there. Or maybe we just keep Martial and just whatever it. Because if, uh, let's say Martial, let's pretend Enketi is Martial. If he didn't play Andreas playing versus Newcastle, it's not the end of, you know, not the end of the world. Would I say Darwin out? Yeah, it looks like it. Looks like he's out for a few weeks. Which is unfortunate because it's fun to watch him play. Yeah, so if we're looking at players that definitely are leaving my team. Why, whether it be later tonight or with the deadline tomorrow or whatever before the deadline. Uh, Darwin's gone. Sterling's gone. Kukurea's gone. 100%. They're all gone. Pretty much guaranteed, which means is going to keep a clean sheet. Uh, and it's going to be annoying. But um, and the players I'm going to bring in, I want Kane. Um, I just think him and Holland are the two best premiums at the moment. Um... I'm kind of tempted to just go Mares. Um, and then in defense, just go Shaw. And that would be for a minus eight. Uh, the only problem is that if I have to get to Salah, I have to do a uh, minus four of some kind. But I think Liverpool are in such kind of turmoil at the moment it's a bit uh a bit bad for them if martial randomly doesn't play um then i can take the additional minus four for him and we have money in the bank so it doesn't really matter um in this kind of scenario and then we just hope that foden and mars are the two that play but again with city it's a bit kind of Who's who, basically. But the likelihood that Mars or Foden don't play, or the likelihood that Mars and Foden both don't play at the same time, is pretty unlikely. So, um, Let me just check one other thing here. Yeah, currently Darwin Stones, uh, Marcian Delo, all not seen uh, in training. Uh, no double gaming twenty one announcement either, which is a problem. Um, deadline is also tomorrow, <laughs> so yeah, big, big, big problems at the moment. Um. There's a video um, showing that Chelsea fans are backing Potter after the game. It says, change the squad. They are the problem. Makes sense, to be honest. I think some of the Chelsea players are definitely underperforming. Um, 
Andy from Let's Talk FPL saying that we need a veg horse this veg horse this price ASAP. I mean, true. It <laughs> could be, could be, it could be the veg horse train. Uh, apparently, the quotes when asked if Varane and Martial were injured or just rested, uh, Ten Hag replied, "Yes, the last one. I think, yeah, they will be okay for the derby." Anthony Alanga led the line before Marcus Rashford was introduced as substitute, playing centrally and scoring two late goals. Casemiro also had a major influence on proceedings when he came on. So, um, he said they'll be okay for the derby. I think they will be. So, let's see some early team news. Uh, so I believe this was after his game, after the press com, the like the post press conference thing. So maybe it's just one of those things where you just kind of you just bite the bullet on Marshy. I hope he plays, and if he does, then you're, you know, you just hope he gets sixty minutes in both games, and it's fine. Um. So, yeah. So, if that's the case, then we can kind of just not worry about Martial. We can go, like, kind of crazy. Would I start Castagne or Robertson? I think you kind of have to start Robertson just because of the price. And Robertson's actually been playing pretty good. He's one of like the Liverpool players that's actually been playing decent. Got three assists in his last four. Like he's actually been doing decent. So I would say probably play him. But yeah, I'm thinking of really switching this up. I'm thinking of going like boom, 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 boom. Uh, boom. And go in. Mares. Kane. Shaw. Uh. Actually, I don't know. I need more Man City and Man United slots. That's a problem. <laughs> I wanted to get in Tony, but no news on his injury. Yeah, there's no news on his injury or his potential ban as well. We still have to not forget that. That Tony could be um, could be suspended for a long period of time as well. Because of the uh, betting uh, allegations that proved to be uh, not in his favor, one might say. Um, maybe I do go like Matoma, get rid of Foden, go Mares because De Bruyne is boring. Go Ederson. Um, and then go like Doherty or something crazy. And then just have like an absolute boatload of money in the bank. Or I could just keep Robertson for the time being. Because I can always go from Mares to De Bruyne. That's always a possibility. I can do that. Let's see if there's anything else there. Seen somebody take a minus 12. And the triple captaining Holland. 
the only problem with their team is that they currently have triple Newcastle. Which isn't a... Uh... Isn't necessarily a good thing when it comes around to game week 25-ish. Um... I see that someone in FPL put in Jao Felix for a minus four by taking out Enketia 15 seconds before he got sent off, so. Very, very interesting. Let me see. Uh, I'm going to check Ben Krellen's. If you haven't followed Ben Krellen on Twitter... Uh, he does fantastic work. I'm just going to check to see um, his table here, what it's looking like for Game Week 21. So, So I thought there was going to be games, potentially double game weeks in 21. Um, um, or 22. So, which they haven't announced yet. Yeah, I think Chelsea, Liverpool could get thrown into 21. So, I'm not sure what the criteria is. I think it's maybe the FA Cup games. Yeah, I think it's the FA Cup games. So, a bunch of weekend games. Then the semifinals for the Carabao Cup is on the Tuesday. Then there's more FA Cup games on the... Saturday, then Carabao Cup games on the Tuesday. Which could also have Chelsea, Liverpool. Um, and then game week 22 with potential some doubles there as well. So, again, a bit tricky to navigate because the Premier League doesn't do communicating very well, which is uh, unfortunate. Um, Let's see. Yeah, I think. I think, I think, I think it's just kind of one of those things where you need more information. Like, we can look at all the players that we want. We can look at Kane. We can look at um, De Bruyne. We can look at Matoma. We can look at whoever. Um, but at the end of the day, we kind of have to wait and see. Because um, there will be press conferences tomorrow. Um, the deadline is... Uh, so, it's for 8... eight. <laughs> 8 p.m. UK time kickoff. 
Um, so we should get some kind of information because the timing would be, uh, what's that, eight, 18 hours before the, before the United game kicks off, the Manchester Derby kicks off. I can do Darwin to Kane, Salah to KDB, and Robert to Botman. It leaves me 1.8 million in the bank so I can get Salah back from it from minus 8. I think that's pretty good. But uh, since you have spare money in the bank, I would say just wait, like, uh, tomorrow just to confirm, like, you know, that certain player, like, like that Nunez is potentially out, if it's anything said. But, like, you know, you can, like, with that sort of move, you don't need to go for Kane right away, even if he goes a 0.1. Because you know you'll have uh, 1.7 in the bank, even if he does. So, that's how I would I would do it. But they, yeah, that seems reasonable for a minus 8. Because um, you're bringing in double game week players for two of them. Uh, and a single game week player for one. So, it's effectively... Um, so, Salah to KDB is, is free. Um, but you gain an extra fixture. Uh, Kane to Darwin is you gain an extra fixture, so it's effectively a minus two, especially with Kane. Uh, and then Botman is to Robo. So you're, you're taking kind of like six points to make those three transfers, because I think it's fine. I just have closed the gap in a mini league to 12 points at top eight, so minus eight worries me. No, no, it should be fine. It should be fine. Again, mini leagues, you don't start worrying until the chips start flying, really. Now, if you were, you know, 8 points or 12 points behind and you'd used all your chips or something like that, then you'd probably be a little bit on the worried side. Um, but that's probably not the case. So, I would say probably just, uh, just kind of relax on that one. So, yeah, let me talk about the triple captaincy real quick. So, Ben Krellen, uh, let me bring up uh, Ben Krellen on Twitter, because he kind of explains it. Also, I would urge everyone to go watch the uh, Planet FPL um, video that they posted today. Today being the Thursday, the 12th. It's a fantastic video. It's about an hour, 14 minutes. Make sure you have time to watch that. It is great. Um, ben also kind of pulls stuff from it as well. Um, so, uh, let me check, because he put, like, what, like, the potential, like, triple captaincy fixtures could be. Let's see, there was a tweet he had somewhere. I think he has a tweet that's directly saying it though. Double game week 21 could also be announced tomorrow too, so that's another thing. I think Ben is going to use it, but I think the options were like you can use it on City um assuming they make it far in the FA Cup final which you're expecting them to do although they get knocked out of the quarters the Carabao Cup, but you have City's double in 20, you have City's double in 23, which I think is better. Um, however, if City do draw with Arsenal in the FA Cup and they have to do a replay, that replay will take place before the first game that they play, which means Holland could get rested um, in the first fixture uh, of, I believe it's like, I think they play Aston Villa. Um, they play, it would be like Aston Villa at home and then somebody else away. What was it? Uh, Man City. Oh, Aston Villa at home, Arsenal away. So, that would be kind of the concern there. Later on in the season for, for Man City, there is potential uh, for double game weeks as well. Um, there's also potential for a Rashford one um, in... Uh, I want to say it's around like the 24, 25, 26 
or 28 timing, something like that, where he can play two really good fixtures. Um, let me see if I can look at it here. So, Man United. Uh, so, it could be in 22, where Man United would have Crystal Palace at home and then Leeds or Brentford at home. That is a possibility that Man United could have. Um, so, that is definitely a possibility. Um, which would be uh, quite good uh, for, for Man United. So... And basically the fixtures in that time would be Crystal Palace at home, Leeds or Brentford at home, Leeds away, uh, Leicester at home, which would be really good. So I would say just kind of keep an eye on that. Uh, but James breaks it down uh, much more depth. I got to rewatch the video um, that that they post on Planet FPL um, because it's, it's a great listen. And I can take my notes down and kind of get... Um, get uh get kind of all the things kind of figured out i'm a very visual person so i'd have to like kind of draw it out and whatnot but uh but yeah so that's gonna do it for this one um if you're watching this uh live over on youtube or live i say it was pre-recorded um and uh yeah you probably have about 15 minutes or so uh to get your teams uh sorted as well so let's move over to the big screen Rodrigo is a good fixture. He does. I don't know what's going wrong with Baffert. He's just got injury after injury after injury, um, which is unfortunate for him. But uh, thank you all for watching the deadline stream. Go and get your teams all sorted. I think you probably you should have around 15 minutes uh, when I finish uh, editing the video and that sort of stuff. Uh, hopefully I answered any questions in the chat. Um, I'm going to be waiting until tomorrow because we could get double gaming fixtures announced an hour before the FPL deadline tomorrow. Something crazy, which would be absolutely insane um for gaming 21 or 22 or something like that it's very possible um so i would say wait as long as you possibly can um until basically now <laughs> if you're watching this um i wouldn't leave it any anything inside of 10 minutes basically so go do it uh get it all sorted um and yeah hopefully you all get a green arrow i certainly need one i mean three reds on the bounce uh make sure to like favorite comment subscribe follow us on all the socials pilot 226 on Twitch, Twitter, and here on YouTube. And until the next one, take care.